Hello, my name is Gary Shotton, and I'm here as a part of Inspiring Better Business. And today we're going to talk about the words, my tongue, or your tongue. And in this process, we're going to study and talk about the, the element of your tongue affecting the words that you speak. And the words that you speak are reflecting what's in your heart, what's inside of you. We all know that uh, if you've been married for any length of time, you can say just a few words to your spouse, and those words can be uh, soothing and re encouraging and, and, and uplifting. But if you say a few words that are uh, critical or, or uh, let's say, picking a fight, you can get it on real fast. I mean, I have experience in that. Now, I've mellowed after 47 years, but I know a few words that can get it going. So I want to be careful that I watch what I say in my marriage. The same thing's true with raising children. If we raise our children in a way that we're speaking words of encouragement, man, there's a whole different reaction to that. But as soon as we move over to something that's negative, the same thing, it, then, then we have a negative result. The same thing is true with virtually everything in our life. The words we speak, your tongue, is very powerful. The Word of God refers to this in the uh, uh, book of uh, James chapter 3, that the tongue is like the uh, bit in a, in a bridle that's on the face of a horse, when you're riding a horse, you can control and direct and stop that horse if you have any experience at all. I was raised on a farm and ranch. I, we had cattle. I rode horse. I have it for a long time. But you want to have the hands on the reins that has, it's connected to that uh, bit inside that horse's mouth because you can control the horse. Now, on the ocean, we have uh, what's called the rudder on the ship. And it's referred to in James chapter 3 about the, the, the rudder on a ship, that it is so small, but it can be so powerful and redirect the entire direction of a gigantic ocean liner or ship. Well, exactly in the same way what we speak in our life through our mouth regarding our finances and our business are just as powerful. You know, we refer to a lot of the Bible, or I refer a lot to the Bible being lessons uh, on business. But if you don't look close, you'll miss it because the Bible is uh, lessons on life, if I, as I've just described. And part of everyone's life, in my awareness, is something to do with finances. And it, we're never ever seeking finances. We're never ever elevating finances. But the fact is, if we have a good flow and an understanding and, and uh, a control on our finances, you know, our marriages go wet better, our, our, our uh, family is better, our children are better off, and so it's a, an important element. And we're talking about faith for finances. Well, here's how we have to look at it, in my opinion. When we have an idea possibly and probably the Spirit of God might speak to you to start a business or might speak to you to expand in a new direction in your business or might speak to you to, to even sell your business and, and, and after a period of time do something else. But in the starting and growing your business, you might think, okay, I ought to first do my research. Man, that is so important. Have I done my studies? Have I put together a financial plan? Am, am I looking at it? Now, a real small business probably would have not much effort in this because you can experiment as a part of that research. You can experiment with making one cake and ba later on being a baker. Or you can experiment with volunteering to fix someone's hair and later on being a, a, a salon uh, owner and, and you can experiment in being a carpenter and first make some small pieces of, of wood items and you're, you're, that's part of your research. And as you're going down the way, at some point you can say, man, I can make this a business. I can quit my uh, lousy government job or I can, I'm tired of, of being limited in what I'm at, but I can do my own thing and I can be a business owner. Well, first of all, it's in your mind. You've done your research, you're, it's in your mind, and you're thinking about it. And you might be careful not to share this with everyone because it is a fact that some people will be a discouragement on anything and everything you ever think about doing. Well, from the mind, this is how faith works. 
from the mind, you've got to move it to your heart. What do I mean? Your gut, your inside, not your physical heart, but your all of your being, everything about you would say, wow, this is going to work. Now, you can go step by step. Don't go too large. You can go, uh, uh, you can, you can uh, just make a, 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 even the very first step in starting your business. And here's how that goes from your heart then you have to take some action. And here's how simple it is. The action doesn't mean you shell out $1,000. The tongue, the tongue could be the very first action you take. I was talking to some groups and I'm just emphasizing. I know from a fact that just to speak out when you're maybe to your spouse or to someone again that has your best interest in mind, that you say, I believe God is calling me to do whatever it is. Speaking with your mouth is powerful. That could be the absolute first action step that you're doing. Not buying the ingredients, not getting an oven, but the very first step could be that awesome uh, uh, avenue of speaking it out. Again, I wouldn't blab it to everyone, you might want to just first speak it to yourself. I believe God is calling me to do this. Because you have one mouth and two ears. You're hearing yourself speak that into existence because you're gaining momentum in your faith. And, you know, God can hear, look at your heart. And he, he doesn't have to hear your words, but you need to hear your words. But when you start taking that action, and from your speaking, you actually buy that ingredients to make the first small cake. Or you, you buy some tools to make some jewelry. Or you uh, create an environment so you can uh, uh, make a, a, a location to fix some hair. Or whatever you're wanting to do, then you're taking steps. You're making action. And I guarantee you that every step you take in the direction that you're headed uh, in, with God's direction, then God is re going to respond correspondingly with some confirmation. Now, if it's in your heart, you'll be able to sort through this is something that came maybe not from God, maybe from a, 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 what supposedly is a friend that's trying to discourage you, and you'll cast off that, oh, man, that'll never work. No, don't say that. Don't let somebody else tell you that. Get away from that person and, and continue to do your research, continue to do your experimenting, continue to grow step by step, but continue speaking faith speaking into existence the things that God has for you in this element of your business. I'm convinced this is how it works. I did that when I was uh, moving my, from a, a long far away to my uh, town that I live in now and I had no opportunity for income and I had a family of five, three small children and I couldn't find a job in my own business. And I looked out in my driveway and I'd used this trailer that I had borrowed from my dad, the trailer that's suitable for hauling horses, hauling cattle. And I had put my furniture in that so I could move from my uh, home uh, many miles away to where I live now. And I looked out there and here's this trailer and I thought, man, I could probably make a little money. But you know what? That kind of looked funny. Uh, I had a horse trailer haul, pulled behind my car, and but I got it in my heart that I could start a business moving furniture. And I put an ad in the paper, a simple step. It cost me less than $2 to put the ad in the paper. And they dialed my home phone. I didn't have a cell phone there then. It wasn't, uh, cell phones were not common. Or they're not, didn't, even, didn't even exist. And they called my home phone. And I answered the phone. I gave them a, a price. And I went out and took action. on the. I can remember the absolute very first job that I ever did with that horse trader. And I will be honest, when I backed up to the family to load a, a bedroom set, they looked at me and said, what? You got a horse trader behind your car? And they asked me, the, the, the wife, since there was a mattress involved, says, did you wash that out? In other words, is there uh, no horse poop in there? No, we cleaned it all up. It's going to be okay. And I had my wife help me on the other end of the mattress, and I did my first job.
From that, I did another job and another job and another job. That's how I got into the mo my business and was in that business for more than 17 years. Well, I hope you can understand and apply this in your situation. Thanks for being a part of Inspiring Better Business.